And here's my question. Please answer to me in the comment section because I am passionate about this. Is this what we want college football to be? But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's where things really get sad in the world of college football. Well, it finally happened, and I knew it was going to happen. Let me make this clear. I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know when. And not only is this a dark situation, but it's a really sad situation too. But just like they say, with anything and everything in this life, with the good, you're also going to get the bad. And we're seeing that unfold right in front of our eyes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. I know what all you sitting there saying. Matt, what in the crap are you talking about? What's going on? Well, my friend, that is a great question. I have an even better answer. You know this little thing we have in college football now? It's called the transfer portal. Yeah, it involves that. You see, I for one love the transfer portal because I think these players, they should be entitled to play wherever they want to play at and they should all be granted at least one year to transfer without sitting out. But unfortunately, the media and everybody out there, they're not going to show you the negative side effects of the portal. And I'm going to because it's the reality of the situation, whether you like it or not. We're going to talk all about that in today's video, so strap in, buckle up. We also got a couple other minor topics to speak, or not even minor, but major topics to speak on, including... There's rumors swirling that, you know, Kyle McCord, the five-star quarterback that transferred from Ohio State, not only maybe will he be joining Nebraska, his former teammate, also five-star wide receiver Julian Fleming, might be going with him. What about that? We got to get to the bottom of that and see what's going on. And also, we got to talk about the Bolitnikoff Award that was handed out last night. It appears the scene there's a little controversy surrounding who should have won this award. Sadly, we don't have any college football to watch today outside of the Army-Navy game, and don't even get me started on that. It sucks. But hey, we still got some college football content to talk about. I hope this video can make up for the lack of college football games today, so you got something to watch. But all right, Matt, blah, 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 shut the crap up. Now without further ado, let's get into it. All right, first things first. Guess what? Surprise, surprise. We're starting off with the main topic. Yeah, that's right. Keeping you on your toes a little bit, but trust me, these other topics, they're just as entertaining. So earlier this morning, the big time and breaking news came out that former UCF and most recently former Oklahoma quarterback Dylan Gabriel, he's going to be transferring to Oregon. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you would know I predicted this and we already talked all about it. I thought he was going to go here. I mean, I'll show you the video right here. This was a couple days ago. So obviously I'm not too surprised by this, but now it is officially official and I can give you my real thoughts on it. Well, first things first, number one, this is a huge pickup for Oregon. Dylan Gabriel, in my humble opinion, was one of, if not the top quarterback in the entire transfer portal. Even dating back to his career at UCF, he's always been, I'm not going to say a great quarterback, but a really solid quarterback. And I would say this most recent year at Oklahoma, I would throw him in that great conversation. I don't have a problem with that. And y'all know how I feel about him and other quarterbacks playing college football for six years. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. And I'm not hating Dylan Gabriel whatsoever. All power to him. Like I said, hate the game not the player. I don't like the game, but at the same time, I can't fault Dylan Gabriel for this because he's probably going to make $2 million in NIL deals next year alone. You got to think about it. If he were to go to the NFL draft this up and coming year, he probably wouldn't even been selected till about the fourth round. And for those of you who don't know how much a fourth round NFL draft pick makes, it's around that one, one and a half million dollars range. Where I'm getting at with this is if I was in his same shoes, I'd have done the same thing. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's where things really get sad in the world of college football. Or my apologies, the new modern day and age and era of college football. Ty Thompson, only a couple hours ago when the news broke, he posted this on Twitter. Didn't write a caption, didn't write anything, he posted this picture right here. As you can see, it's some Oregon Ducks helmets, and it looks like he's at the Oregon facility, and that's him on the left, and he's walking away. You shouldn't have to be a rocket scientist to put two and two together, guys. He doesn't have a choice. He's got to enter the portal. This isn't even a situation where he wanted to enter the portal. Oregon basically forced them to enter the portal. They was like, yeah, uh, thanks for all the hard work, but we got Dylan Gabriel now, so you can go on. It's kind of like that side chick you're talking to and then you finally meet your main girl and you're like, ah, yeah, well, thanks for all the fun, but I got my main girl now. You know what I'm talking about when you was in high school and you're entertaining like 10 to 15 different girls at one time. Same thing here. I hate it for him, but like I said, it's the harsh reality. Ty Thompson was the backup plan this entire time. They strung him along. And I don't think a lot of people understand how heartbreaking this is and just gut-wrenching. Every situation I speak on and evaluate, I try to put myself in those shoes and think about how I would react. And I want you to do the same thing. Imagine you're Ty Thompson. For those of you who don't know, Ty Thompson was there before Bo Nix. So he's putting in all this work and he's thinking potentially he's going to be the starter and then boom, out of nowhere they're bringing Bo Nix. So he's got to sit another year. And I guarantee you the coaching staff was telling him, oh yeah, don't don't worry, after this year, you're going to be the guy we just brought Bo in to be the bridge quarterback. After Bo Nix, you're probably going to be the starter. And he's like, you know what? I believe him. 
I'm not going to transfer. I'm going to continue to work hard and develop. And all throughout this year, he waited his turn. He's worked hard in practice. All these athletes, they work hard. And finally, Bo Nix is done. He's going to the NFL draft or doing whatever he's going to do. And now they do this. They bring in another transfer portal quarterback. Similar situation. They brought in Bo Nix, and now they're bringing in Dylan Gabriel. You got six, seventh-year seniors playing. And here's my question. Please answer to me in the comment section because I am passionate about this. Is this what we want college football to be? You see, Ty Thompson here is a college kid. He's a young man trying to play college football, but he can't because of all these super-duper seniors. And it pisses me off. If you want to play five years of college football, fine. But once you start playing six, seven years like Bo Nix and Dylan Gabriel, dude, get out of here. It's over. And yet again, I'm not taking a personal shot at Bo Nix or Dylan Gabriel. It's more so of I'm using them as an example. I don't like it. Four years is more than enough. And to me, five is the max. That's pushing it. And it's a double standard because what all these older people say, man, kids nowadays, they don't want to work hard. They don't want to persevere. They don't want to stick it out at a school. When something doesn't go their way, they just up and leave. And yeah, we see that a lot, but this is what happens when a kid sticks it out and he doesn't leave and he has great discipline and he wants to work hard. He still gets mistreated. Don't care what any of you say. Todd Thompson is the victim in the situation. He was mistreated. And although I do think he's mistreated, I can't even be too mad at Dan Lanning, can I? Because heading into this video, I was somewhat mad, but I was like, you know what? There's no way Dan Lanning knew last year they was going to get Dylan Gabriel in the transfer portal. You see what I'm saying? This wasn't some mastermind plan to sabotage Ty Thompson's career. It just so happened to be this way. And you got to look at it from a coaching perspective. Every single coach wants to have a three to four deep quarterback room where you got three to four guys that can all start and win games. So I'm really not even necessarily too upset with Dan Lanning getting another good quarterback. Because you got to look at it from this way. Nick Saban did the same thing last year. The quarterback was a little bit shaky heading into this year for Alabama. So Saban was like, hey, we got Jalen Milrow. He's probably going to be good. We also got Ty Simpson. He's going to be good. Heck, why not? Let's go get another guy. Why not? I can do it. And that's what Alabama did. They got Tyler Buckner. So it's really hard to even fault the coaches. They just want to get the best players they can. I'm not mad at any person in any of this. I'm more so of, like I said, I'm mad at the game. And the game is a transfer portal. And also, we gave all these college athletes an extra year because of COVID. That was the stupidest thing ever. I thought here should have been the rule. If you didn't play, no, it doesn't count against you. But if you played during that year, yeah, it should have counted against you. It's straight up bull crap. I could go on and on, but we got to get a move on to our second topic. And that's no other than this rumor. Check it out. I've had quite a few of you send this to me. There are rumors swirling that five-star wide receiver Julian Fleming and five-star quarterback Kyle McCord, they may both, not just one of them, but both of them, go to Nebraska. What about that? <laughs> Somebody said, what a huge mistake that would be. Oh, man, oh, man. What do y'all think about this? Because I've seen so many people in the comments say, oh, well, Nebraska's just a quarterback away from winning nine or ten games. And I don't know, man. Me, personally, I think Nebraska's a lot of players away from winning nine or ten games. But, hey. That's just me. I put it to you like this. I think they have a great shot of landing Kyle McCord, but I don't think they have a great shot of getting Kyle McCord and Julian Fleming. Maybe they do get them, but I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. That's a pretty insane rumor. Moving along here to our third and final topic. What in the crap happened last night with a bullet in a cuff award? I thought Marvin Harrison Jr. was going to run away with it, but he only won. He did win the award. Let me throw that in there. But he won by one vote. And while a lot of people are highly upset about this and they're arguing about it, it's because everybody stated Malik Neighbors should have won the award. And here's where things get ironic in all of this. It's the same argument as we use for the college football playoff. Who deserved the award? In my humble opinion, Malik Neighbors. But who is the best wide receiver in the country? In my humble opinion, Marvin Harrison Jr. So it's very tricky because somehow, someway, you got to mesh those two together and come out with a winner. And then there's the whole argument of, hey, well, yeah, Malik Neighbors put up better numbers, but he had a way better quarterback. His quarterback's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Whereas Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't have that great of a quarterback, and he still put up decent numbers. And a lot of people are saying, well, oh, Marvin Harrison Jr. only won it because of his name and blah, 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 blah. And I do get that point in perspective. He's had a lot of buzz around his name ever since, well, he was growing up. But I'll put it to you like this. If I got to vote on this this year, I would have gave it to Marvin Harrison Jr. I get it. Malik Neighbors had a heck of a season. Hats off to him. But I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best wide receiver in the country right now. And I'm not going to sit up here and argue who should have won it because at the end of the day, they both had great seasons. I'm curious to see what you guys got to say on all the topics. Let me know your thoughts down below about that.